I sent Elizabeth an email earlier in the week, and I said, um, do you want to practice that storytelling sometime uh, on Saturday, just to familiar, you know, just to get some time in? And she said, no, I think I've got it down pretty well. And I said, yeah, you do have it down pretty well. Good job, Elizabeth. John is hard. Um, and Elizabeth said, you know, I kind of like that passage. Basically what Jesus is saying is, come on, people, get with it. Get with it. You know, get, get on board here. And that's basically what Jesus is doing. It, this happens a lot in John's gospel. It seems that Jesus and the people are not on the same page, that they're talking at cross purposes. I mean, one is talking apples, the other is talking oranges, and they, they're just not on the same page. I mean, it's like, um, and you get these non sequitur answers a lot in John's gospel, and you get them in this reading. Um, it, it's basically like saying, uh, what are we having for dinner? And a voice comes from the kitchen, train wreck and minions. Well, no, that wasn't the question. Well, that's the answer, so make sense of it. You know, and, and, and it's sometimes I, I'll get these emails, and I don't know if you ever, or text, I mean, text, if you ever follow a conversation that's texted, you'll often get these non sequiturs, and you think, well, how, how did that person get that response from my question? And that's what's going on here. The people say to Jesus, when did you get here? And Jesus says, look, you're looking for me not because of my signs, but because you had your fill of food. Well, okay, Jesus, answer the question. When did you get here? The people in Jesus are talking at cross purposes. And where they're at cross purposes is the meaning of the relationship between Jesus and the people. The people want to have a relationship with Jesus where he will give them stuff. It's kind of an exploitive um, uh, relationship. Jesus, we will love you if you give us food. Jesus, we will love you if, you if you give us things to drink. And we know these kind of relationships can be exploitive. Uh, you know, I, why do I love Susan? Well, she cooks and she bakes and she sews and she does the plumbing and she does the carpentry and, you know, she plants a garden, you know. You'd be a fool not to love her, you know? But I love her for the things she does. We had a, a very uh, outspoken, refreshing outreach minister when I was at Middletown first, and she knew the people who came in for assistance very well, and uh, she knew their lives and, and, and very well. And one day this guy came in, as he did like once a week, asking for food, and and monetary assistance and she gave it to him and as he was leaving the building she went out the door and he was about I don't know 50 steps away from the building and she, she just said hey Bobby next time you come back come back because you love me <laughs> yeah, you know. and that's kind of what Jesus is saying love me for who I am love me for who sent me don't love me for the things I do for you. That's kind of exploitive. You know, and Susan would say, John, love me for who I am, not for the things I do for you. Eric Fromm years ago said, there are two kinds of love. One love says, I love you because I need you. And that's an immature love. The other love says, I need you because I love you. And that's a mature love. And Jesus is asking the people to have this mature love for him and as he does for them. And so he says, believe in me. Now, that phrase is interesting, and I'm scared to say this because I've never read it in any commentary. But in the Greek, it is so clear. Jesus does not say, believe in me. 
He says, believe into me. Believe into me. And there's a difference between believe in me and believe into me. It's like saying, um, oh, they're in accounting or they're in law. Well, that's what they do to make money. But then to say they're into accounting indicates a passion and a commitment and an energy and an immersion and an investment in that, you know. They're into golf. They're into stamp collecting. They're into football. I mean, it, it's their life, you know. It's a big difference between being in and being into. And Jesus says, believe into me. It's more than just an intellectual thinking about Jesus. Yeah, he existed. Yeah, he was a historical figure. Be into me. Make it your passion. Make it commitment. Make it be your life. Make it be your immersion. And believe, believe in Latin it would be credo, which is give your heart. Credo is I give my heart, you know. Believe comes from the English word to belove. Belove. You know, and my mic just went off again, didn't it? Yeah, well, I'm not into this mic right now. <laughs> when we are into something and we belove into something, we start to see things differently and we start to look at the world differently because what we're into shapes how we see things. You know, the person who's into accounting will we'll be into figures and into costs and into balance sheets and so on, and they'll see the world kind of that way. The person who's into law will see it through the eyes of, of, of the law. The person who's into football will, will see it, you know, that way. I'm interested as people respond to same-gender marriage that people who are into inclusion see that decision so differently than people who are not. It shapes their thinking. It shapes their, their views of marriage. It shapes their view of relationships between same gender people. Looking through Jesus' eyes shapes how we see things. It shapes how we see the hungry. It shapes how we see the poor. It shapes how we see children, how we see outcasts. It shapes how we see nature. You know, it shapes us when we're into something. So we, when we belove into something, it changes us. We become a new person. Now, another interesting part of the Greek here in John, in, in Greek, there are two words for life. Um, in both cases, it's just in, it's translated life in English, but there are two words for life. One is, is bios, which, from which we get biology, which is physical life. Physical life that is supported by bread and manna and water and ice cream and cake and cheese <laughs> and, and so on. The other word is zoe, from which we get zoology. That means the quality of one's life. And when Jesus talks to the crowd here, they're talking bios, give us the food. And Jesus is talking zoe. I'm giving you the purpose and the meaning and the significance to your life from which you will never hunger. I will make your life important. I will breathe life into you. I will breathe existence into you so that you will be fully alive. The difference between the bios life and the zoe life is the difference between a statue, which looks like a human being, and a human being that's fully alive. Augustine said, 
the glory of God as a human being fully alive. And that's what Jesus is offering the people. Sometimes we call that eternal life. A life that's fully alive, Jesus would say, is eternal life because God has breathed God's energy into it. And Jesus says, that's what I'm offering you. One person said when they read this text, basically what Jesus is saying to the, to the people is, you're looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> you know, you're looking for love in, in what you eat, in what you wear, in what you drink, and in what the other person does for you. You know, and we can be into toxic things. We can be into things that are very damaging. And Jesus is saying, don't feed on those things. Feed on that which will make you healthy, that will make you vibrant, that will make you fully alive. Be into me, and you will be fully alive, and you will have that eternal life and that love you want. We can love ourselves for our sake. And that's kind of self-centered. We can love Jesus for our sake. And that's kind of self-centered. We can love Jesus for his sake. And that's certainly a form of discipleship, doing Jesus' will. I think Jesus is saying here a fourth thing. Love yourself for Jesus' sake. That's what gives life. Jesus came that we can love ourselves. That's the hardest thing in the world. It's pretty easy to love me for my sake. It's not so hard to love God for my sake. It's even not so hard really to love Jesus for Jesus' sake. But to love me, to love myself, for Jesus' sake, is very hard. Um, I find most people don't have the self-esteem, that they have guilt, they have shame. And Jesus says, love yourself as I love you. Love yourself for my sake, and you will have that food from which you'll never hunger, and that drink from which you'll never be thirsty and you'll experience the fullness of life. May it be so. Amen.